Today I'm giving you my review of the Snyder Cut, aka Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm Luke and on this channel we'll be sharing movie reviews, especially going into the elements of story and how it contributes to making it a good or a bad movie. Now I will say that I saw Justice League in theater and I think it was the only time I ever saw it and I really disliked it. And so when I heard about the Snyder Cut, I was excited about it and I would say cautiously optimistic because I've seen a few of Zack Snyder's films and some of them are good, some of them are okay. I actually personally really liked Man of Steel. I thought that that was a good one. Batman v Superman was okay. So I guess what I was excited for is the opportunity for such a big movie to be redone in a way that um, gave it justice, no pun intended. So I was unsure if Zack Snyder's version, his full version, would actually be better than the theatrical cut, but I was pleasantly surprised. Now for my videos, I'm going to be giving a non-spoiler review towards the beginning of my videos, and then later on I'll share a few more spoilers in my review of that aspect of it. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is probably the length of this movie. It's four hours long, and I can understand if some people are not willing to sit through four hours of a film. But personally, I actually didn't mind it. I, it kind of reminded me of the extended edition of The Lord of the Rings. Uh, just the way that it was a little bit more slow paced towards the beginning and it took time to um, share stories and the environments. Now, could it have been condensed down to a three hour version? Yeah, I think so. I think there were some parts that could have been edited out. There were more just extra. Like I think even the whole scene with Wonder Woman stopping that heist um, I love that scene, but it ne didn't necessarily contribute to the rest of the film. I would say even the flash scene that they included in here, I think didn't contribute a whole lot to the rest of the film, but I still really love that scene and I'm glad they included it personally. Honestly, one of the main things that makes this movie infinitely better is the tone. It's, you know, first of all, it's consistent. I know a lot of people complained about the weird red filter in the last scene, but not just the look of it. That's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the feeling of it. I think Josh Whedon, who, you know, he was involved in the Avengers franchise. They have, you know, some interesting humor that they include in the Marvel movies. And they, it seems like he tried to insert that in this movie and make it a little bit lighter. But I feel like those jokes just kind of detracted from the rest of the film. This one, it's more serious and it really uh, feels more weighty because of it. Now don't get me wrong, there are still jokes, like The Flash still is the comic relief of this movie, but it's done in a way that's actually more appropriate for this style of film. And some of the bad jokes that um, I personally didn't like, like one example was the uh, um, with uh, Wonder Woman's, with Wonder Woman's lasso where Aquaman is kind of like, disclosing you know, the truth because that's what that, uh, the lasso is supposed to do. It seems out of character for him. I personally didn't love that in the original and it's nowhere to be seen in this film. I think one of the segments where the tone really made a huge difference was the whole segment of Superman being resurrected. In the original, I kind of remember it being almost like, hey, I have an idea, what, why don't we resurrect Superman? Like it seemed very flippant. But in this one, there was some weight to it. First of all, there was the aspect of the mother boxes and when you use the mother box, it's going to alert the enemy of where you are. Now, I'm not sure if that was a spoiler. Sorry if it was. Um, but anyway, there's also another scene where you see Cyborg having this premonition of what could happen if Superman returns. So I won't disclose exactly what happens in that scene right now. Um, but it basically shows that, hey, like if we bring him back to life, um, or at least if we try and we fail, you know, things may not work out so well. Like we don't want to uh, do this if it's not really worth it. But they come, come to the conclusion that, yeah, but this is our only option. And then the other biggest thing, which I think is helped by the length of this movie, is that we actually got some good character development. And you have to realize that um, half of the whole Justice League team didn't get a prequel movie, an origin movie, and so they kind of had to handle those prequel stories in this movie. So that's kind of part of the reason for the length of it. So that's part of the reason I actually like that it's four hours. Um, so I want to get into more of these stories and how they actually developed 
on the characters here, but uh, there will be some spoilers in this segment. So if you want to skip this and hear my final review at the end, you can skip to uh, this uh, time marker and you'll be able to see that part. But what we have in this movie is basically the hero's journey, but it's being played out simultaneously through multiple characters throughout the whole thing. For Batman, it's actually kind of interesting. We're almost seeing the tail end of his arc, which I think started out in Batman v Superman, where he's kind of bitter and kind of, um, you know, wants to kill Superman. But now he's come full circle to where he realized his mistake and now he's trying to make up for it. And at the end, we see how he's much more optimistic compared to how he was in Batman v Superman. He's actually kind of the, the shining light of hope that's kind of keeping this team together. Wonder Woman in this film actually didn't really have a character arc. I believe she was actually a static character in this movie, and I think that's fine because we really uh, went into that in the first Wonder Woman movie, and I haven't seen uh, the second Wonder Woman film yet, but I'm assuming that they do even more in that film as well. So I think it's okay that they didn't touch it here. For Aquaman, we do see the hero's journey played out, and it's pretty short, but we see it from the very beginning, where, like in the original movie, we see Batman going and uh, trying to recruit him, and then this is kind of the call to adventure for Aquaman, and he rejects it right off the bat. And then what happens is you have William Defoe's character, I forget his name, and he's kind of acts as the guide um, for, uh, for Aquaman and kind of encourages him to take up the mantle um, as the king of the sea or whatever and uh, eventually there's this inciting incident that happens with uh, Steppenwolf attacking and it kind of brings it all home for him to where he realizes he needs to get into the battle. For the character of The Flash, what I liked about this movie is that we got to see more of what his life looked like before he became a member of the Justice League. You know, he's uh, has his dad in prison, we knew that, but we actually get to see him kind of saving some people's lives, And uh, but he also seems kind of like a loner. Uh, he seems like he's lacking that uh, community. And so when Batman, who I think is the guide for him, comes along and uh, gives him the call to adventure, he doesn't reject it, he actually is like, yes, right away. And uh, we, we get to, a little, to see a little bit of his motivation. He literally says, I need friends because again, he doesn't have that with his dad, but now he finds that belonging with the Justice League. Now in this movie, overall, Superman is done just much better. Now of course, there's no uh, CGI mustache being removed, so that's a plus, but I think uh, they did some reshoots for uh, Henry Cavill's uh, Superman. I think um, it really added to the film in a lot of ways. I think he has a short arc. We see his um, hero's journey played out where he's actually almost like a villain at first and doesn't know who he is. Um, but then Lois Lane comes in and she is the uh, guide who helps him remember who he is and what his uh, mission is. And it, he has to kind of go through this before he's able to join back up with the Justice League to help them. And I think it's important to see that other than, because in the last film I just felt like it was like, okay, he's bad, now he leaves. Um, he goes to the farm for a second and then all of a sudden he's back in the fight. It, there wasn't really much reason for him to even be bad in the first place. But in this film we actually see that progression a little bit better. And then the story that really shines and really stands out in this movie in particular is that of Cyborg. He almost becomes the main protagonist, the main hero's journey that we see play out throughout this whole movie. In fact, if I had one criticism, it would be just the fact that it seemed like they introduced his storyline a little bit too late in the film. They focused on Lois Lane and some others at the beginning. I feel like they should have had some of his earlier scenes even earlier in the movie. But they do a great job with this segment. We actually get to see, you know, slowly how he became Cyborg. His origin story kind of uh, played out in flashbacks. We get to see his relationship with his father, which is really interesting. Like he's very angry at his father and I think he doesn't feel like he has any purpose. He's uh, mad that his father made him this way. But his father kind of acts as the guide in this movie for him where he, sent, he gives him this tape recorder, uh, which of course he crushes, but it's kind of um, signifying that his father is kind of pushing him to be uh, the person that he's made to be. So I think that that's really cool, and we see that progression happening to where he discovers everything he can do, his powers, uh, his abilities, and he realizes, okay, I actually have to do some, something to contribute in this fight. And that really all kind of comes to 
um, fruition, especially what, when the, uh, his guide, his father, it kind of dies halfway through the movie. And this kind of reminds you of uh, Luke Skywalker's relationship with Obi-Wan, uh, where it's almost like Obi-Wan had to die in order um, for him to really kind of take up that mantle fully as a Jedi. Now the cool thing is we actually see a little bit more uh, depth to the character of Steppenwolf, the villain in this movie. Now in the original, I just remember him just being a very generic bad guy. Like you didn't really know why he was bad, why he was there. Um, and so that dimension was just really lacking from the original. But here we kind of learn a little bit more about his motivation. I guess he's trying to please Darkseid. He's trying to pay off some sort of debt that he has to him. And so that actually really um, contributes to this film being a lot better than the original, in my opinion. And the last few things that I wanted to mention, I know there's so many things I could mention about this movie, but I really like the intro. I like the beginning where it showed uh, Superman dying, sort of the, uh, the flashback from Bat Batman v Superman. And this really actually reminded me of the, the Two Towers, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, where you see uh, Gandalf, um, kind of dying at the beginning, but you see it from a different perspective. I thought this was really cool and it kind of explained a little bit better um, that uh, Superman's death was actually what awoke the mother boxes. So it, I thought that that was a much better intro than what they had in the first movie. Now I know some people didn't love this edition, but uh, there's the edition of Martian Manhunter and it's just a quick cameo. You see that he is pretending to be um, Martha Kent and when he comes out of the room after talking to Lois Lane uh, it turns into Martian Manhunter and uh, if you didn't know that um, they were planning on casting this character um, I don't know his name but he's I know he's the um, FBI agent from the blacklist um, I kind of knew that already but we didn't know if we'd ever see that that uh, actor become Martian Manhunter so I was pretty excited about that personally and now of course they had him again in the end which to me I that that would be another criticism I didn't really think that that was necessary to have him um, fly in and introduce himself it was just kind of like hey by the way if you need another team member here I am like it didn't really feel um, really needed because it was already introduced later or earlier in the film and then of course we have to talk about this uh, infamous uh, nightmare sequence that happens in the end credits now I personally actually really liked this but what I didn't like is that they included it on top of the whole um, Lex Luthor and Deathstroke scene which we did see in the theatrical cut um, but to me I think they should have chose one or the other and I would have actually preferred the uh, the nightmare sequence because I thought it was really interesting getting to see uh, Jared Leto's Joker who I didn't like as the Joker but I felt like he kind of redeemed himself in this movie I think his Joker in this movie is actually way better than in Suicide Squad from what I gather I think they just kind of tacked this on at the end and to be just more of a uh, fan Easter egg from what I understand I don't know if Zack Snyder will be filming any sequels I really hope he does because I would love to see this played out because what I think is that this is actually going to be part of the um, Flashpoint Paradox timeline which I've seen the cartoon movie for that which is really cool I would love to see that on the big screen I'd love to see Zack Snyder uh, do his portrayal of it but who knows if we'll ever see that. So I think if anything, he just wanted to give us a quick taste of what it could have been. Overall, I really enjoyed Zack Snyder's Justice League, and I'm really glad that he got to see his vision realized. And the rating that I'm gonna give it is a B. Thanks so much for watching. For more movie reviews like this, be sure and subscribe, and give this video a thumbs up if you like this. And let me know in the comments below what you thought of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.